about um, fees must fall, but the fact is fees have already fallen. That's, it's a different argument going on there. And there's an argument about getting certification that qualifies you to get employment. That's, that's something that is real, but actual education is free. Um, just the way the world's changed, the long tail of things. So in the 80s and 90s, we mass market, that was where you hit the big money, and that was what everyone aimed for. But the internet has unlocked the genie of this uh, sort of um, uniqueness or, or, or the fact that we're all a little bit weird. Seth Godin says it, like we're all a little bit weird. And now that we see other people that are also weird like us on the internet, we're sort of not as scared to be weird. And so we start to buy products or the, markets, the mass market start, stops fitting us now. We don't we not want one size fits all anymore. Um, and so there's no more anything for everyone. It's now, you know, this, this whole niche um, thing. So this is the, the fourth industrial revolution. People unqualified to be involved, students, misfits, in the garage, and the tool of, you know, the poster boy for the fourth industrial revolution is the 3D printer. Um, just a bit of background. Global cultural trends are the incubator for disruptive technology. So technology is not going to affect anyone if people don't want to use it. So there's, there's underlying things that are in our culture that are going to drive us towards technologies. It's the reason why we use those technologies. And if you look at some of these trends, the trend of authenticity um, is driving us to a values approach to business. So all things equal, people will pay more for an authentic experience. Um, the long tail, so there's a div diverging market needs. It's no more one size fits all. The, the gig, the side hustle, remote work, work-life balance, all of those trends um, are going to affect HR, employment. Um, you know, it's going to affect the way that, that business works and the way the world works. And the question to ask yourself, if you could make three quarters of your current salary pursuing your hobbies and interests, would you still work where you work? Self-directed learning, so it gives people more options, um, but there's also distraction to your organizations. Um, and then a celebration of diversity, um, it creates more parties to, to understand and to serve. And um, we can't just steamroll approach, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach anymore. Um, and you can't fight the rising tide of diversity, you can't try and stay, you know, whatever, whatever your little group is. Um, globally responsible citizens, so people are going to, we're going to reap what we sow in the next 10 years. And the organizations that, that take hold of that and are responsible are going to reap the reward of being part of the solution. And then there's just this little eco chamber thing that started happening with fake news, propaganda, Facebook, and all that. And you better be in control of your own story because someone can hijack that and jump on a plane. You send a tweet, you jump on a plane, you arrive, and you, you mob by uh, journalists, and you've been fired. And you don't even know what happened. Um, so that's the world we live in. So the technology trends then looking at the cultural trends that are going to drive the technology trends that are going to deliver disruption um, are the on-demand economy. So the Uber of everything, the Uber of manufacturing, the Uber of processing, the Uber of maintenance, the Uber of energy. You know, why should you buy something now um, and, and only use it once a month? You want to use it just when you need it and pay for it just when you need it. Um, the sharing economy and open source um, projects like Roboband are taking hold of open source technology, sharing these technologies and making prosthetics from something that was 100,000 Rand, um, you know, to fit a prosthetic to 500 Rand. Um, <coughs> there's a whole case study on, on how 3D printing is, is a child of open source. The bottom-up economy, again, people are not looking for Steve Jobs to sit in his ivory tower and design a product for us. We now want a product that fits us and we want to be part of that design. We want to back the projects that we, we are excited about. So the Kickstarter, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but the way that we do business has changed. So we don't have to sell an idea anymore. We can actually go test the markets and test the, you know, the lean business model. Um, the circular economy is another trend. Um, the fourth industrial revolution is going to democratize things like 3D metal printing, virtual reality and uh, augmented reality, um, bioprinting. So can you imagine bioprinting your own medicine or cells for, you know, your body. Um, so we're getting to a point where that's going to become a reality, not just bioprinting in some lab, but actually in, in your local economy. Um, robotics, narrow AI, artificial intelligence and knowledge work. So IBM launched um, a radiography um, program which can analyze um, x-rays, basically Radiology is now redundant. Like if you're studying radiology, last year was a good career to get into. It's not anymore. 
because now computers are doing it, and they're doing it faster and more accurately than humans. And what's next? So there's a little thing there. Will AI replace your um, career in the next 10 years? Um, you know, you wouldn't think radiologists would be on the first sort of line of defense, but they are. Um, global internet con connectivity, like Google balloons and Facebook satellites. What does the world look like when the globe is covered with, with the internet? Um, it, it, there's a lot of positives, but there are also some negatives as well. Um, energy, um, Elon Musk has open sourced his um, giga factories. Uh, you can build solar panels. Um, he has the plans just to go start the factory. Um, construction, 3D printing houses, space exploration. Um, they recently pr did a, a proof of concept 3D printing uh, moon dust using solar, solar rays. So the idea is you can actually set up a 3D printer on, on, on the moon and then print parts of your spaceship for Mars.